Welcome to Tales from the Craft. This is episode three, Wyoming. This episode is going to be a lot more casual. The Flycraft crew takes a couple boats out to the desert. We have Pete. Oh, damn. Clay, Brandon and Pasta, plus Dustin, Ben, and myself. All right, who's got extra tent stakes? One time, I saw Clay catch a giant rainbow on this river. A slutty bounce ring and then like a techie one. Because this was just a trip for fun and not with any real objective other than to get wet and see if the fish bite, I decided to shoot film instead of video for a lot of the trip. For this trip, I would be taking my Canon 8U1 with a 50mm f1.8 lens. This was my dad's old camera and one of my most important possessions in life, so it seems like a good idea to take it on a river trip. Ben was pulling the trailer equivalent of a double articulated streamer, so we couldn't drive too fast. After setting up camp, we were on our way to the river. The boats were quickly loaded and dropped off at the start of the float. Ben and Dustin ran shuttle car downriver while the rest of us rigged rods. What? When I say the rest of us rigged rods, I really mean I sat and watched everyone else rig rods because I'm terrible at tying knots in the wind. Brandon has a belief that the elemental force of the wind is in fact a cold-hearted witch who lurks in the shadows waiting to be named. Those who call her by name receive her howling wrath. Therefore, we must not speak of her by name and only refer to her as Cindy. That feel fishy? Yeah, looks fishy. Dustin broke this sacred rule almost immediately. I don't subscribe to the supernatural, but I can't refute facts. Brandon said don't say her name and she won't come to the river party. Dustin spoke her name and she came howling five minutes later. Clay, if you were like four or five seconds earlier on that set, you might have had a fish. Oh, damn. One of my favorite things in the world is the clay, like six, eight beer deep Bassmaster set. Oh, damn. Up until this point, I was of the belief that all fish are equal. A catch is a catch no matter the species. Apparently some fish are trash fish. Once we began throwing a nymph rig, the white fish started hitting hard and the crew started getting annoyed with how many whiteies we had to get through between hooking trout. Oh my Great. I put on your whitefish fly though. Seriously, it's probably the lowest I've ever fished this river. Everyone's so different. I mean, you can cross the river in places at this flow. Because we finally have flies that they're eating and we're just missing. Well, that's not true, I guess. We pretty much just m missing fish on all their flies today. Oh, dude, right where their boat is, that's an insane run. Look at that, it looks like a little acorn. <laughs> this is my first time on this river, so I have no idea what the flows are supposed to be or how deep it usually is. All I know is that it's an amazing place with some very healthy fish. We had been on the water for about five hours or so, and had found a rig that was checking all the right boxes for the fish. As the light was beginning to fade, we pulled the boats into what could only be referred to as a honey hole. I could have stayed here the rest of my life. The weather was mild, and Cindy was nowhere to be found. We had plenty of fish that were biting, and it even seemed like the whitefish were slowing down. This particular honey hole is special to me because it was my first time getting a full hookup shot on a drone. I'm still out here and I'm still moving along. Still wondering. I'm still
never be found. Okay. Look cool Ready? while you do it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> <Hold on>. <laughs> <laughs> The clay station was up and running early on day two, well before anyone else had even started moving. I heard him get into the water and make a few casts before I rolled out of my tent. I got really lucky because right as I picked up my camera, clay was hooked into something. Something pretty big. Looks like day two was starting off really well. I shot a few more frames of film while we had breakfast and re-rigged the rods. Not only did Clay start the day off really well, but as soon as we were in the boats, we had a double hookup with Ben and Brandon getting their first whitefish of the day. And like clockwork, both Ben and Brandon were hooked up again not two minutes later. I think there might actually be a whitefish curse. Oh, yeah. oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, nice net job, Clay. A nice fish. We did manage to break the curse and pull in a few trout. Oh, damn. Even Ben was able to get off the bottom feeder express and hook into a trout. Poor guy wasn't able to bring it in all the way, though. My arm is getting tired. <laughs> oh, shit, he's going berserk. Is it like a 14 inch ass hooked whitey? <laughs> Probably. Put a piece of one of these hot dogs. Put on your rig. Well, you can eat some of it and then the fish can eat some of it. While the crew continued to fish, I started to notice some commotion happening on the cliffs above us. I quickly swapped to my longest lens so I could see what was going on. It's always been my dream to shoot for National Geographic. That hasn't happened yet, so instead you have to settle for my own homemade version of planet Earth. Enjoy. A lone golden eagle finds itself in the wrong neighborhood. The long harsh winter has pushed this majestic bird to its absolute limits resorting to scavenging from red hawk nests in order to survive. But what's this? Mama's home. And she defends her nest ferociously. Even though she's the lightweight in this face-off, she has speed on her side. The battle rages on. Mother against invader. until at last the golden eagle must admit defeat and fly off in search of easier prey. We drift slowly with the current, dwarfed by the riverside cliffs. The trout gods must have accepted our sacrifice because we finally stopped hooking whitefish and began finding trout. Even Ben caught something. We moved as slow as we could, attempting to preserve all the time we had on the water. There was a specific bend that Brandon was aiming for, and when we came to it, we knew we might never leave. The trout were big, and they were hungry. We had gotten the fly pattern sorted out over the past day on the water. This meant that we had caught some of the best fish of our lives in that secret little bend. I even put down the camera and fished myself. 
It's like two of the biggest fish I ever caught. This is the point when the weather took a turn for awesome. Oh shit, lightning, dude. It's a little too 